Disclaimer! Most of the world doesn't share your opinion. Fuck, I don't have a fucking intro. <laughs> Starting off with the list is the one that I have probably the least to say about it. It's the new EP from funk artist My Lane. I found My Lane earlier this year with the debut EP Sakura Shadows, which quickly became my favorite album of 2021, and I'm currently holding 434 of total plays throughout the project because it's that much of a banger. And this new EP, Immortal, is for the most part the same case, with pretty much every song on here holding the same sound from Shadows. Immortal is a fun banger. I love the vibe of Let It Out with those vocals saying the title of the track and the bass line being my favorites. It's overall a lot of fun. I pretty much have the same thing to say for Meow, Don't Ask, and Through Soul. They're fun and I like them. The only track on here that's a bit of a miss for me personally is Eclipse. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love how different it sounds and how it's more of a rap-centric than funk, but the interlude slash chorus slash whatever the hell it is that sounds sampled kind of just takes me out of the song personally. Other than that, it's a solid funk EP. Not as great as the Cursed Shadows in my opinion, but not bad in the slightest. 8 out of 10. Next up is Doctor Strange 2, aka Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Now, I'm gonna be real here. I'm working off a very vague memory of this movie at this point, both from how long it's been since I've seen it, and also because I've only seen this once, and I was high during it. <laughs> was it worth it? Eh, not really, since I didn't feel like it improved on the movie that much. Uh, but I did see it in 3D, and that was pretty cool. Would highly recommend that. Except you can't really see it in theaters anymore. When it comes to the movie, though... I'm not that big of a fan of MCU movies in general. I've seen a lot of them, but remember barely any. So when going into Doctor Strange 2, I didn't really expect much, except for just getting Sam Raimi-isms, because every complaint I heard about the movie was just Sam Raimi-isms, so I knew we had a banger. And we did have a banger. I really enjoyed this movie, and it quickly became one of my favorite from the MCUs just for that classic horror aspect that Raimi brought. I swear there's a jump scare that feels very reminiscent of the old school classic 80s horror, and it made me very happy. My thoughts on the story are, uh, no thoughts, head empty, don't know, don't care. Yeah, I don't really remember much of the story aside from little bits and pieces. I mean, I can give props, though, that the movie works with some of the stuff that happened during WandaVision, and being someone who never watched that show, I was able to understand what they were talking about and wanting to do with the movie, so that's pretty cool. Other than that, it was a fun movie. I liked it. Also, the post credit scene is probably one of my favorite MCU post credit scenes. 8 out of 10. Also, also, uh, for some reason, this movie's responsible for a war on r slash Raimi memes over getting a Wanda Sim flare. No, I do not know anything else. <laughs> the geography that I stand compares you superior. And finally, the big boy himself, the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And it's pretty much what I expected it to be. Going into this, I wasn't really all that excited in the slightest. I never watched any of the trailers because I quit doing that, but I did hear about some of the behind-the-scenes shit. Now, I guess take this with a grain of salt, since I cannot for the life of me remember where I heard this info, and if you're in the Star Wars community, you know that there's a lot of people on here that like to give Star Wars news that they pulled out of their fucking ass. But from what I remember hearing was that the show had the entire season script written out by one writer, who I guess is a very credible writer, but before they could start filming, Kathleen Kennedy fired him, hired a new writer that basically has like three screenplays under his belt, and they're all kind of dog shit, and had him do a bunch of rewrites for the season. Along that was the disaster that was The Book of Boba Friend, which only made my lack of faith for Obi-Wan worse, and learning about Hayden Christensen coming back to play Darth Vader and back that up with how many fucking times Boba Friend would take his helmet off made me have zero faith in the show, but I knew I was gonna watch it anyways because it has Ewan McGregor in it, and I like him, and also, it's Star Wars. So the first two episodes are out now, and like I said, it's pretty much what I expected it to be. Nothing all that special. Starting off, I thought it was kind of weird that the first episode literally starts with a YouTube compilation of Anakin and Obi-Wan's relationship throughout the prequels that go on for like five minutes. I think a better opening shot would have been Obi-Wan sleeping and having nightmares of the Mustafar battle. Nonetheless, there is a couple scenes and moments that I liked, and I agree with Jeremy Johns that it's a good thing that the two episodes dropped at once, because the final shot in the second episode is what makes me want to continue watching the series. Actually, scratch that, the fact that fucking Ice Cube's son is credited on IMDb, that, that's the reason why I want to continue. What the fuck? 
But anyways, uh, this is where I would separate myself from Jeremy on that point, because he said that the ending of the first episode would have left him uh, to just want to binge watch the series later. I don't think I would ever return to the series. <laughs> Ewan McGregor is good, though he hasn't really had much to do so far. I guess aside from having a John Wick scene at one point, which felt odd. I don't know where I stand with seeing hand-to-hand -hand combat in a Star Wars property, but eh, whatever. There's also a really funny scene where Ewan McGrog- McGrog- <laughs> There's also a really funny scene where Ewan and Robert Pattinson's mentally handicapped brother are arguing with each other because Ewan's in hiding since the Sith are out still killing the Jedi, while the other guy is trying to convince Ewan that the Jedi are still alive, and it results in a scene that literally sounds like the fan base towards The Last Jedi Luke. <laughs> Also, can we talk about how Obi-Wan Jedi mind-tricked a guy into rethinking his life just because he offered him death sticks, but then just stands there and lets a dealer drop spice into his pocket and does absolutely nothing about it? I get that it was setting up for his escape, but still, meth is better than cigarettes, I guess. But I think that's pretty much where I am with positives, aside from the scene with Ben and Elwyn, which I thought was neat, I guess. But the rest of the time spent in the episodes either had me uninterested or cringing immensely. I hope Reva becomes more of a character throughout the series, because right now I don't really like her all that much. I find her kind of cringe and not in a good way. And, uh, same goes for Child Leia. That scene at the party with her cousin was just fucking awful, but also, I hate children, so that's definitely playing a case. Oh yeah, I guess one last positive is that I like the fact that we got the fuck off of Tatooine after the first episode. Holy shit. Other than that, I still don't have much hope for the show, but I am looking a bit forward to what we'll get later down the line. And of course, everyone has their own opinion, but my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.